good afternoon uh, on this lovely, beautiful, sunny Sunday afternoon. Um, first of all, I want to start by saying thank you to all those who joined us on Thursday evening uh, for our time together. It was great to see everyone over Zoom uh, and to spend time together. Uh, for anyone who couldn't make it or couldn't join us uh, again on Thursday, this Thursday evening at 8 o'clock, we'll be coming together again over Zoom and I'll send you the link out uh, in later on in the week. Again, that'll be at about 8 o'clock-ish, um, depending on if you want to go and clap the NHS workers, first of all. Uh, secondly, in preparation for this, they'll be send, we'll be sending through our next study in James later on today. Uh, and then the cheat sheet will follow on Tuesday. So please get stuck into that stuff and make the most of this resource. Uh, we want to, to keep you focused on God at this time. And then thirdly, as a family in these unusual times, we've been using the, the time to spend more uh, time together in God's word. Uh, we've been looking at the Gospel of Mark together. And so my plan is every Tuesday and Friday, I'll post up a, a little thought on these passages that uh, we as a family have been looking at together. Uh, I know there's lots of stuff online at the minute, but hopefully this will be a, something that will keep us focused on Jesus and root it in his word as the weeks go past. So just um, share with you a little thought uh, before we finish. Uh, almost a week ago now, we're, we're almost a week through lockdown. On Monday evening, uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson spoke those words that we didn't want to hear. However, they were words that we were expecting uh, to hear as we had already begun to live in very different conditions over the past few weeks. A few, for a few moments, I want us to reflect upon the past few weeks and what lessons we can take away for today, this week, and into the future. And I've also mixed in a few of my kind of personal reflections too. Firstly, let us remember that these are unusual times. Don't ignore this fact, but don't let it overwhelm you also. The news is filled with stories that can make us anxious, but don't change the channel. Watch the news prayerfully and listen also for those stories of good news, of the rare good news stories, and also those news of the numbers being cured and recovering from this condition. These are unusual times, but God is in the midst of them. On a more personal note, uh, I've maybe not been uh, as anxious, but I've realised a lot of things about myself. And one of those is that I'm probably more soft than I'd like to think. Um, it's okay to not be okay at times. Uh, and until Thursday night, uh, and then again today, uh, as we listened to Albert, I didn't realize just how much I miss church and, and being around you folks. Um, and it's okay for us to feel this strangeness and to feel the strangeness of the situation. Uh, we were made for meaningful contact, for fellowship and for friendship and communion. But this is a good time to pause and to realize how amazing church is and be thankful for the Thank, th thankful to God for the gift of placing us in such a wonderful congregation. And when we do get back together again, let's really appreciate what we have and who we have. More generally again, these are opportune times. God is at work and we make the most of these days. God is, as only he can, working in these, things, these situations to do amazing things for his glory. He has stripped away so much that so many hold so tightly to. Why? So that they, so that we will see that we need him most of all. So let us all turn to him and make the most of the opportunity to spend more time with him and to share him with others. Let's spend time in prayer, in the word, reading good theological books and even conversing with each other through whatever media we have. And then again, in a more personal note, I love my wife and I'm not just saying that to win brownie points. I love my wife and in these days I get to see how amazing she is in these circumstances. Don't get me wrong, being stuck in the house with each other and with the three boys is tough at times. It hasn't all been plain sailing. We haven't had uh, play dates the whole time. It's been tough going at times. But I see my wife take on these new challenges with strength and grace and I love her more. And I thank God for equipping her to do this in these times. And these are ordained times. When these times pass, let us not forget what we've learned. Think of how God in his common grace has fostered community and brought people together where society has been so divided. 
think about how families are spending more time together, even in some circumstances, those families which have been estranged. Think about our new appreciation for the work others do in the NHS, in our supermarkets, those driving trucks, and even our government. Think of how many churches are now reaching across the world because they've had to go online. I can't remember a time when I've seen so many ministers' faces on Facebook. This time will pass, but I pray the lessons that we learn will stay with us for many years to come and for many generations to come. Let me finish with these words from Habakkuk chapter 1 verses 5 to 6. Look among the nations and see. Wonder and be astounded, for I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if I told you. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, the Chaldeans, that bitter and nasty nation who march through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings not their own. In these verses, we see God's response to the prophet's question, a question that we all ask at times. What are you up to, God? God was going to raise up these godless, immoral Chaldeans to do his work. Strange to think. But through this perplexing response, God challenges not only Habakkuk's faith, but ours as well. That God can bring about good from evil is a theme right the way through the whole Bible. Such as in Joseph's statement to his brothers in Genesis 50 verse 20 where he says, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. God's response to Habakkuk also foreshadows the ultimate good, eternal salvation that would come through the ultimate evil, the execution of a sinless, perfect son upon the cross. The cross and its wisdom that Jesus, Jesus receives our punishment and we receive his prize is why we continue to have faith amid frustration and fear. God's providential use of people and events is both purposeful and personal. All that is happening now is under God's control for his purposes in the lives of people across the globe. Folks, I hope that these words are an encouragement to you as they are to me. And I hope that we will make the most of the opportunities that God gives to us at this time. Please remember that you can contact me uh, via email or via WhatsApp or text. Uh, and Albert too. That we're here to help. Um, we're here to help God's people. That's our role that God has graciously called us to. So please make use of us. Until we meet again, God bless.